Hello everyone, my name is Praveen and I welcome you all to yet another tutorial on the Docker for Beginners series. Uh, this would be possibly the last tutorial on the Docker for Beginners series and uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna see the uh, how the containers are basically created in detail and uh, uh, last time we saw that uh, you know images are just the file system layers and we use the union file system to create a container uh, container gets its own read write layer and it's using the copy on write to copy the data from images to the container side right? what are we going to see once you start the container uh, how are you going to see the logs for that container what are the ways to see it uh, how we can use that writable layer to write something within the container and possibly just we can see in very brief uh, how you can mount certain directories uh, for your containers and how you can utilize it. Uh, so if you're liking the series so far, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the videos, put your comments. Uh, if you have any queries, questions or any suggestions for my uh, for me, uh, your, your uh, encouragement is highly welcome. Your questions are highly welcome. Very happy to answer those. Okay. Uh, so we are coming to an end of our docker series the thing which has been left uh, after this is how we can use the docker swarm docker swarm is you can think of it as a alternative for kubernetes it's an orchestration engine uh, we'll not go through docker swarm but because it's not really widely used within the industry people are mostly using the kubernetes right uh, so i'll if you want i can uh, put in the comments uh, if you want me to create another uh, tutorial onto the Kubernetes as well, and very happy to create it. Uh, Docker Compose, wherein the, the the same Docker file that we write in a text file, the similar things you can do it in a you know, text file, but more of a YML kind of a syntax, right? <coughs> so we can see uh, those as well in the future series. But uh, as of now, for the beginners, I think uh, this much is enough. We can lay the foundation for. Uh, uh, for all the future learnings uh, as you can say okay so to start with uh, let's see uh, what I can do is let's say docker ps I'll see what all things are running into my system as of now and I'll probably just tom those so I'll just stop my all my containers and we can get a clean slate to work with okay I'll stop all those it will take like 10 15 seconds because uh, for stopping it it takes 10 seconds it gives a grace period of 10 seconds to stop all your containers so let's say first container has been stopped now it will take some time for stopping the second container as well okay so meanwhile i'll go to another tab and what i will do is uh, if you have followed through all the lectures you can see that we have created one uh, spring boot based app and we created an image called as hello docker which is nothing but just exposing one endpoint uh, for us. So this is our uh, Hello Docker container, which is Spring Boot Java app, Spring Boot based Java application, right? So what I will do is I will start this container now. Say Hello Docker. My version is 1.1. I'll start it till the time this is getting stopped. This got stopped. Okay, let it start. Now, this will start to print certain logs to your standard output or the standard error, right? Uh, in practical scenarios, you will gonna run this particular image in, uh, into the background and not into the foreground, right? Now, if you want to see uh, what has been happening with this particular image, where exactly is the logs getting printed and how you can access that, uh, there is a handy little command called as docker logs and you give a image uh, or the container id so my container id is let's say this one what i can do is docker logs and i can put the container id not this one so i'll click and copy it okay it's going to take some time for come up okay now the container has been starting right so what I will do is so this is basically directly coming onto the study out 
I'll go to another tab and here you see if I run the docker logs command how we can see the similar kind of an output. So this is very useful uh, if you see here it's getting the similar kind of output. This is very useful uh, when you are running your process in background and want to see what exactly has been happening with your container. Okay, So that is for the docker logs command. So I'll leave it here. Uh, in practical purposes or in production, you're probably not going to use it in a similar way. Instead, what Docker does is it, it gives you a different type of services called a Splunk or Fluentd. It's it's mainly a different container basically wherein whatever logs that you're writing in a file system or something that you can directly transfer it to those particular uh, technologies, right? Splunk or something which is you know, more of a JSON based logs. You can directly index it or put it into a log stash or Splunk or something like this. Uh, but this is for uh, for your understanding purpose that you are still be able to see the logs of your container. Okay. Next thing what I will do is I'm going to start Alpine images. Okay. I'll give it a name. Let's say Alpine 1 and I'll start Alpine and let me start it into the interactive mode and I'll get the ASH uh, flat uh, okay, I think I need to give this after this okay ASH is a default shell for uh, Alpine okay I think this container is already in use so let me stop it or maybe I can give a different name. I think it is stopped. But it's not pruned. Okay. Let me. Yeah. Okay. Let me do this one. I'll prune all the stopped containers. So that we can start on a clean slate. Docker container. Prune. So this will remove all the stopped containers for me. Once it is removed, we should be able to run the same command again. Okay. Let's say find one. I should see a shell now, hopefully. Okay. We are in the shell. Now, as I, as I told you earlier that uh, once you start a container, you basically get a, some kind of a read write layer. So images are read only. But once you start a container, it basically gives you some kind of a read write layer by copying all the contents from the image into your container, which is a, some kind of a temporary area that as you can think about, right? So what I will do is, so this is my read write layer as of now. If you see all the things which has been copied, is there is nothing but some kind of a Linux based file system thingy, right? So what I will do is, I will create some kind of a folder and this is inside a container, mind you, okay? And I'll create, let's say, some kind of a text file. Okay. Say, hello, Pravin. Okay. I saved it. If I go and check it again, I'll, I'll go to a different shell altogether. And I see, first a docker ps. I see what is my shell. This is my shell. I say, Docker attach, start copying it. I'll put 780E. I should get a shell now. I got a shell, and if I do PS, you can see here ASH, which has been running it, that has been running it from this particular instance. Okay, now I say slash. Okay. We created a directory called as Pravin. I can see it here. Okay, I can go inside this directory and I should see my file which has been created. Right? Okay, so this is how you can write something uh, within your file, um, uh, within your container itself. Okay, uh, now if this container gets stopped, right, all these things will get removed control pq coming out of it and i say docker ps 
and I stop this container. Once I stop it, everything should get removed. Okay. Now if you start it again, okay, I'll start another container with the same image now. Now, once this container gets started, I should not see any full recorders plugin inside that container because uh, we, we never really, uh, uh, because this is a new image and uh, as we, as I told you earlier, whatever you write within the container, it's an ephemeral thing. It's, it's a short term temporary thing. It, it doesn't, it, it's in no way update anything into your images layer. So that is what we are trying to demonstrate now. Point two. Yeah, it is stopped because we didn't run it in a interactive mode. So let me run it in an interactive mode now. And let's see dash it name is Alpine three, let's say Alpine ASH. Okay. Now let's see. Okay, we got a shell. Now if I do ls, I don't see any folder called as proving here. You see here? This is how the file system works between the containers and the images. I hope this is clear now. That whatever you write within a container, that is a temporary thing. Tempor container goes away. All those things will never get copied back to your images file system. So that is how you can run multiple containers using the same images right okay so this brings us to closure of this particular docker for beginner series whatever queries uh, comments that you have please put it into the uh, comments section for this particular series uh, ask any questions that you may be having if you like it please go ahead and uh, like the videos and subscribe to the channel if you have subscribed it please press the bell icon thank you so much